Hey folks, this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery, and today we are going to be making some Black Eyed Susans. These flowers are going to look a little similar to sunflowers, but we're going to add a twist at the end just to make them a little bit more unique. Start off with paper. You're going to choose the yellow of your choice. I would go with something a little bit darker, a little bit deeper. I have the deep yellow, which is a darker one from Quilled Creations, and I also have their just standard yellow. And then I'm also going to be using this chocolate brown from Craft Harbor paper. These are all 1 8 inch paper. For my quilling tool, I'm going to be using my needle tool, but you can use whatever you like for this project. You're going to need some small scissors, a small paintbrush. As far as glue, white craft glue, the Elmer's glue wall will be fine. That's what's in the needle nose container. And then I also have some tacky glue for when I put the flowers together. You're going to need a surface to build on. So I do have my cork board covered in parchment paper and some pins. And then the twist that I mentioned earlier, we're going to be adding some color with watercolor paint. This is the most basic Crayola watercolor paint you can find. I stole it from my daughter. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be using just to show how you can use what you have. So to start off with, we're going to be making the flower petals. This is going to be a super basic shape, but not one that I use very often. We're going to be making sort of an oval shape. So I have the deep yellow paper, and this paper is about 18 inches long. I'm going to tear it right in half. So each side is going to be about 9 inches, and each of those sides is going to be one petal. So I take one of the halves and I'm just going to roll it end to end on my needle tool. Very standard start here. Just get it all the way down to the end. And like I said, if you don't want to use a needle tool here, you can use a slotted tool, you can use an automatic quilling tool, whatever you have and whatever you prefer is fine. Once you take it off the tool, you're going to let it open up naturally in your hand just a little bit and then we're going to glue down the end to seal just a little bit of glue will be fine and then once that sets we are going to make the shape all you have to do is just squeeze it right in the center you can squeeze it all the way down you don't want to pinch the sides because we're not really looking for a marquee shape, we're not looking for a point on either side, we're just looking to squeeze the center. And even though I squeezed it all the way down, it does pop up a little bit. And those are your oval petals. You're going to need 12 of those for each flower. After you have your petals made, you can go ahead and start working on the center of your flower. I have two strips of this chocolate brown paper. They're about 22 inches long. And I actually need my paper to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to glue these two strips end to end. And then I'm going to, after that's set, roll it up into a tight coil. Pinch that for a moment and it ended up looking a little bit too crooked for me so just a little bit of an adjustment there okay so at this point we are going to roll that from end to end it will be a little tricky to roll it as continuous uh, coil on your quilling tool so when I get really really long strips I like to just get it started on my tool and Take it off after a bit and start rolling it by hand. Even on a slotted tool, it starts to get a little wonky. So I'm just going to take a moment and roll this up by hand without making you sit through that entire thing. I rolled it up until there's about six inches left or so. And I'm just going to tear that off. I actually don't need it to be the entire two full strips worth. So after I tear that off, I'm going to glue down the edge. And notice I didn't let this open up at all. This is a tight coil. 
and then just pushing my fingers from the underneath a little bit, I'm doming just a tad. If you ever look at Black Eyed Susan's, the center does kind of go up a little bit. You can make them even more exaggerated if you want to. For this project, I'm just doing a slight dome in, this, in the middle there. After applying a little bit of glue to the underside and wiping that out with your paintbrush, you can set that aside to dry for a little bit. And we're gonna move on to the next part of what's gonna be the center, which is the little fringed bit that sits around that domed center. So grab that other strip of that chocolate brown paper that we didn't use a second ago and some small scissors and just start snipping. This is my preferred technique for making fringe on 18, or sorry, 1 8 inch wide quilling paper. I have a whole video about different fringing techniques and the pros and cons of all of them. And this is even for wider strips. I just like to use scissors. I think it gives me the most control, but I will link to that video in the description box for this one so you can see your other options if this seems a little tedious to you. Uh, we only need about four inches of this fringe work for each flower, so it really won't take you too long, but I just like the control of doing it by hand. So here is the fringe strip. I did the entire thing even though we won't be using that much for each flower and now we're going to attach it to the domed piece that we just made. Now we're not going to attach it at the very bottom of the base because we want it to sit up a little bit. So what we're going to do is apply some glue right at the top of the strip on the outside if that makes sense. So instead of doing it so it sits at the bottom and it's even at the bottom of the base, we're going to have it go a little bit higher. So notice here I'm putting glue on the top edge of the outside strip. And that's where I'm going to try to line up the bottom of the fringed piece. If that doesn't work out exactly, it's okay. You're still going to get a similar effect of the texture of the fringe, even if it's sitting right at the base. You could also use wider paper strips for this. If it's the same color, or even, even a different color will be fine. You can make the, the two different browns. That will be just fine. But this is, this is what I chose to do. So I add a little bit of glue and let that set. I'm gonna add a little bit more to the next section and then gently wrap this around. If you pull too hard, and your fringed paper tears, that is okay. Just glue it in two pieces. That's not gonna, nobody's gonna notice that it's not one continuous piece of fringe. It will all work out. We're gonna keep going here. A little bit of glue on that edge and wrap it around. We're going to do about two continuous layers of this fringe paper. So we're just gonna keep going now. That's about one. And I'm just gonna keep going in the same manner until I get the whole, the second layer done. Once I get to the end of the second layer of fringe, I'm going to tear off the extra, add a bit of glue to whatever is left, and get that to, to stay. Now you can see because I let the fringe sit a little bit higher, you can see that it is on a different level than the rest of the dome. And that is a, a better angle there. You can see that is not it's not as low as the bottom. It does sit up a little bit, so it does add that other layer of texture. Now here comes the super fun part, but it is 100% optional. You do not have to add the watercolor if that terrifies you of adding water to your quilling projects. You do not have to, but I'm going to show you how to do it. And I also wanted to show the inspiration for this 
project. I've been wanting to do a watercolor on quilling project for a while and my in-laws brought my husband these beautiful black eyed Susans for his birthday last week and you can see it had kind of a variated center. It wasn't just a solid color petals. It has a little bit of a brownish kind of red going for it. So we're going to add that touch to our quilling uh, petals here. So like I said, this is a very basic watercolor set. I sprayed with a little bit of water from a spray bottle. I'm going to be using red, a little bit of brown, and a touch of black. First thing we're going to do is with clean water, I'm going to just lightly, this is just a very small amount of water, lightly wet half of the petal. And then I'm going to go over to my red and lightly brush on a little bit of the red watercolor. And this is basic watercolor technique. It's called wet on wet. So I took the wet paint and I put it on the wet paper. And it's going to make it so that there's no hard line of where paint starts and stops. It's going to kind of spread organically and evenly and look a little bit more natural. Next thing I'm doing is adding a little bit of brown starting on the top and just kind of brushing that into the red. And I realized I want a little bit more red. I go back in, add a little bit more red. Now it's really looking like something. And then just to make it really have a nice variation of color, I added a tiny bit of black to the end. And then that's sort of the look we're looking for. You can see what we started with and where we are now. So you can see that the, the brown and the black on the end really gives it a darkness on one side and then it goes into the red and then it goes into the yellow of what the paper was originally. Almost like a, like a sunset sort of situation, how it's not different lines of colors, they naturally bleed into each other. So we're doing it again, wet the petal to start with, added some red to where it was wet, added a little bit of brown on the top, added a little bit more red, and then just a touch of black right on the edge. If that black looks like it's too dark, get some more water and kind of brush it out a little bit. As long as you're not dumping a ton of water on this and really being rough with it while it's wet, this is gonna work just fine. It's a great way to add a little bit extra color to your quilling without having to change your paper strips. It might help it look a little bit more natural to the flower. At this point, you can see I've done all 12 petals and I've let them dry. I'm going to start gluing them together to the center. So that I'm going to be using Aileen's Tacky Glue for this. And to keep everything still, I'm going to put a straight pin right through the center hole of my, uh, my domed center that I started with. And then you can use a brush for this, you can just dip, you can use a toothpick. I'm using a quilling tool, just adding a little bit of glue to the painted end of each of the petals. And then I'm gonna put them all around the center. So I started on either side just to kind of make it even and, and that way I knew that I was getting six on one half and six on the other. It's just a matter of a little bit of glue and getting them in there. If you want to use pins to keep your petals in line, don't be afraid to go ahead and do that. It will keep everything where you want it as it dries. You know, good thing about tack glue is it dries quickly, but it is still, it is still glue. It, it does take a second here. So you wanna make sure that your petals are where you like them. Don't be afraid to add some pins. So we're just going to skip ahead a little bit here. I think you'll get the picture on how to put the petals on. At this point I have all 12 petals on and I'm just putting some pins in because they're starting to kind of want to push each other out a little bit. So just some pins around and that will keep everything together as the glue dries. And then we can show the finished examples. So at this point, everything is dry. I also went ahead and finished one making 
the petals with just that deep yellow paper without painting it so you could really see the difference and, and figure out your preference if you wanted to go ahead and try painting your petals or you want to leave them as is. Leave them as is definitely looks like Black Eyed Susan. It could even be a little bit more of a simplified version of a sunflower. I have a, a sunflower project um, on my channel that I put out a few years ago and it's a little bit more complicated than this. It involves a quilling comb and different colors and but if you're looking for something a little bit more straightforward, this would make a nice sunflower as well. But I will link to that original project for this one also. This looks like I'm losing a petal here, so I'm gonna re-glue that in just a second. But that is what you are. Oops, there it is. That's okay, a little bit more glue. That is what we are looking for by adding the watercolor. Here is one with the other yellow, that straightforward yellow from Quilled Creations that I showed in the beginning as well. So there's three different kinds of Black Eyed Susans you can make using the same method. As always, if you have any questions about this, I know this is kind of a different concept, so there's probably gonna be quite a few questions. Please leave them in the, the comment section for the video and I will answer them as soon as I can. I will link to all the supplies I used for these projects, all the strips and the paint. Uh, I'll try to find the same one. Like I said, it's just a standard Crayola, like back to school time watercolor set. I even used the brush that came with it just to make things really simple. Uh, I will also share another project I have. It's an older one about uh, watercolor painting on quilling. I made some crocus flowers a number of years ago. I will add that video in addition to the other videos I already mentioned. So look for all that in the description box. Uh, you will also be able to find a link to my Amazon storefront I just started to make shopping for quilling supplies a little bit easier. And you can also find a link there to my Buy Me A Coffee page where I am adding some extras that you can check out if you'd like to support me that way. So many of you have done that over the years and you've all been so kind. So I really appreciate that. It definitely helps the page keep growing. So thank you all again so much for that. Don't forget one last thing and that's to like and subscribe so you can be notified of the next time I make a video. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.